In a world where death is the hunter, my friend, there is no time for regrets or doubts. There is only time for decisions. We hardly ever realize that we can cut anything out of our lives, anytime, in the blink of an eye. You say you need help. Help for what? You have everything needed for the extravagant journey that is your life. Nobody knows who I am or what I do. Not even I, Don Juan Matters. Life in itself is sufficient, self-explanatory, and complete. For an instant, I think I saw. I saw the loneliness of a man as a gigantic wave which had frozen in front of me, held back by the invisible wall of a metaphor. The dying sun will glow on you without burning as it has done today, and then your death will point to the south, to the vastness. Death is the only wise advisor that we have. Whenever you feel, as you always do, that everything is going wrong, nothing really matters outside its touch. Your death will tell you, I haven't touched you yet. The trick is in what one emphasizes. We either make ourselves miserable, or we make ourselves happy. The amount of work is the same. To worry is to become accessible, unwittingly accessible. And once you worry, you cling to anything, out of desperation, and once you cling, you are bound to get exhausted, or to exhaust whoever, or whatever you are clinging to. Forget the self, and you will fear nothing, in whatever level or awareness you find yourself to be. I would say that the best of us always comes out when we are against the wall, when we feel the sword dangling overhead. If one must succeed in anything, the success must come gently, with a great deal of effort, but with no stress or obsession. We are men, and our lot in life is to learn, and to be hurled, into inconceivable new worlds. Only if they remain totally detached, can they have the energy, to be free. Theirs is a particular type of detachment which is born, not out of fear or indolence, but out of conviction. That was the way human beings are, they love to be told what to do, but they love even more to fight, and not do what they are told, and thus, they get entangled in hating the one who told them, in the first place. A warrior takes his lot, whatever it may be, and accepts it in the ultimate humbleness. He accepts humbleness what he is, not as a ground for regret, but as a living challenge. To be a warrior, a man had to be, first of all, and rightfully so, keenly aware of his own death. But to be concerned with death, would force any of us to focus on the self, and that would be debilitating. A warrior thinks of his death, when things become unclear. The idea of death, is the only thing that tempers our spirit. Nothing can temper the spirit of the warrior as much as the challenge of dealing with impossible people in positions of power. Only under those conditions can warriors acquire the sobriety and serenity to withstand the pressure of the unknowable. The hardest thing in the world is for a warrior to let others be. To seek the perfection of the warrior spirit, is the only task worthy of our temperiness, our manhood. 
The basic difference between an ordinary man and a warrior is that a warrior takes everything as a challenge, while an ordinary man takes everything as a blessing or a curse. A warrior must cultivate the feeling that he has everything needed for the extravagant journey that is his life. What counts for a warrior is being alive. Life in itself is sufficient, self-explanatory, and complete. The art of a warrior is to balance the terror of being a man with the wonder of being a man. A warrior must learn to make every act count, since he is going to be here, in this world, only for a short while, in fact, too short for witnessing all the marvels of it. Don Juan had always said to me that our great enemy is the fact that we never believe what is happening to us. Freedom to dissolve, to lift up, to be like the flame of a candle, which, in spite of being up against the light of a billion stars, remains intact, because it never pretended to be more than what it is, a mere candle. Seek and see the marvels around you. You will get tired of looking at yourself alone, and that fatigue will make you deaf and blind to everything else. I've been experiencing brief flashes of disassociation or shallow states of non-ordinary reality. A man goes to knowledge as he goes to war, wide awake, with fear, with respect, and with absolute assurance. Power rests on the kind of knowledge one holds. What is the sense of knowing things that are useless? A man of knowledge lives by acting, not by thinking about acting. For me, there is only traveling on paths that have heart, and the only worthwhile challenge is to traverse its full length, and there I travel looking, looking breathlessly. The aim is to balance the terror of being alive with the wonder of being alive. Look at every path closely and deliberately. Try it as many times as you think necessary. Then ask yourself alone one question, does this path have a heart? If it does, the path is good, if it doesn't, it is of no use. For me, the world is weird, because it is stupendous, awesome, mysterious, unfathomable. My interest has been to convince you that you must assume responsibility for being here in this marvelous world, in this marvelous desert, in this marvelous time.